Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Read a Game of Thrones. I'm your host, Rakim, and today we're going to be talking about the very first chapter in the book, the Bran chapter. Bran is our viewpoint character, chapter one. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. As usual, here is your spoiler warning. You have been warned. There are spoilers in this video. Get out if you don't want spoilers. So what is a Let's Read? My Let's Reads are similar to a Let's Play, like you see people who play video games on YouTube. But I read the books off screen and do commentary and analyses on camera. This is the first brand chapter of George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones. You can look down below in the description to find more information about the book and the video series. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the plot synopsis of the viewpoint brand, uh, character overviews. We're going to talk about some of the themes, topics, and sim symbols, although in this one, they're really more symbols than anything else and more. So let's jump right into it with the synopsis. We have the synopsis of the very first chapter of the book, which is a brand viewpoint chapter. Um, I like to break my synopses down, if you're new here, into the who, what, when, where, why, and how, and all that jazz, and give you a few of the overview of the plot points that happen in the chapter. Um, so we have who, we have the Starks of Winterfell. Bran is our viewpoint character. Everything that we learn, we learn uh, through what Bran experiences and what he knows. And we have some other characters that are important. Eddard, who is the father of the House of Stark, and we have Rob, the eldest son of the Starks. Um, uh, Rob is Eddard's oldest son, and we have John, who is Eddard's bastard son. And there are a few other characters who are close to the Starks, like servants and allies and friends. What? They're going to a beheading. Bran is seven years old. He is He has been deemed old enough to finally see a beheading. So that's where our adventure starts. We're going to go uh, see someone get their head cut off. Um, when it's fresh in the morning, um, we learn that it is the end of the summer and that summer in this world lasts for nine years. Now, that's a very long ass summer. I don't know about you, but nine years is too long for summer for me. I prefer the cold. Um, and this just happens to be a clear and cold morning where they're in the hills and woods surrounding Winterfell. Winterfell is a northern city looking at the map in the book. It is just south of the wall. Um, if you calculate, which I have done, um, it's about a 10 days ride south of the wall. Um, that's judging based on how far the characters were north of the wall in the prologue and how far south this is. It's probably a little longer than 10 days ride, but something similar to that. So we have the why. Bran, the viewpoint character of the chapter, is finally of age. As the son of the Lord of Winterfell, warden in the north at our start, it is Bran's role to accept certain duties of being a young lord. So he kind of has to do this. And this is a, a very telling moment of his character as he is beginning to come of age and the story is beginning. So we have some plot points. Um, the characters are going to the beheading then the beheading happens, then the characters leave the beheading, and then after that they find dire wolves, and that ends the chapter. So next we have a sort of, what do we learn? What do we learn? What does Bran's first viewpoint chapter tell us? Well, we learn that there are magical creatures. Magical creatures exist, or there are magical creatures returning to this world. The wildlings, consorted with giants and ghouls, they stole girl children in the dead of night and drank blood from polished horns. And their women lay with the others in the long night to sire terrible half-human children. So there are half-human children. Um, there's an event or uh, a period called the long night, whatever that is. I'm sure we'll learn more about it as we read more into the story. Um, uh, we have ghouls and giants and uh, a little bit of rape in there as well. So there are magical creatures in a time where it's probably not safe to be a woman. Um, and that sort of thing. So we have mentioned Age of Heroes and Children of the Forest, further information about p potential magical creatures living in this world. And then we see in this chapter, dire wolves. Um, not only do we see dire wolves, but we just happen to be with a character that sees the first dire wolves in the south or in the north, um, which is south of the wall, since for 200 years no one's seen it that we know of at least. Um, then we also learn the banner of the Starks of Winterfell is a gray dire wolf racing across an ice white 
field. Uh, we also learned that it is not okay to break oaths in this world. They take that shit seriously, and we see a beheading because someone has broken an oath. Um, we also learned that there are potential, we get a, a bit of the religion in the story. Um, apparently there are seven hells. What in the seven hells is it? Theon says on page 17. We also learned that all bastards in the north receive the surname Snow via our character, John. So now we're going to get into some of the character overviews. The most important characters in this chapter are the Starks, Bran, Jon, Rob, and Eddard. Bran Stark is our viewpoint character. We don't really get too many details of, him, of his appearance, unless I miss them, which I very well might have done that. Um, but we also might learn more of his appearance when he isn't the viewpoint character. But we do know that he is young, he is seven. Um, and also, this is important because if it has been summer for nine years, then he is younger than it has been summer. Um, he has an older brother, Rob, and an older half-brother, John. Um, with youth comes na naivete and enthusiasm. I wrote this and sometimes I can't read it. <laughs> um, follows the examples of his father and his brothers very well. Um, we see him follow these older men in his life as they're sort of setting the example of what a good young lord is supposed to be. Um, how a good young lord is supposed to dish out punishment and act around their families and friends and that sort of thing. Um, and he's very eager to be a part of things as a viewpoint character. He gets excited when things are happening. He's strong spirited, um, is not easily phased by the beheading at his age. We expect him to sort of shy away from it. But no, he sees it. The guy gets his head cut off um, and he watches it. He kind of almost shoves away, but he doesn't. Um, he is a very strong spirited seven year old. Um, so we have the establishment of his coming of age and maybe he is the hero, a hero in the story or one of the hero. We learn in this uh, chapter that there are going to be a lot of characters in the story, a lot. The next character we have is Rob Stark. Rob Stark is the oldest son of the Starks. Um, he is 14, we know that because John is 14 and he's described as being John's age. Sorry for the typo there. Um, his appearance, he is a big, broad, and he's described as being uh, as growing every day. Um, he looks like his mother, who is a Tully. Mother's coloring, the fair skin, red brown hair, and blue eyes of the Tullys of River Run. He is muscular, fair-skinned, strong, fast. Interesting to note that we get his appearance only when really talking about John's appearance and how different they look. Uh, John is kind of the polar opposite in terms of the features that Rob has. Uh, he has characteristics of his father as well when we start talking about sort of personality. There's a scene, or scene, there's a moment where he's talking to some of the other characters, I think it's Theon, and just his tone of voice as it is described just really makes him seem like his father, who we have seen and we will see when we talk about him later in this video, has a strong leader presence. The next character that we're going to talk about is Jon Snow. Jon Snow is the bastard son of Eddard Stark. He appears to be a good older brother. We see his interactions with Rob and with Bran, um, and they all seem to get along for him to be a bastard. He isn't mistreated by his brothers. Um, we see a moment later on in the end of the chapter uh, what, what kind of implications it could have that he is a bastard. But in terms of what we get from this chapter, from Bran's point of view, um, John is a liked character. The brothers like him. He is respected. Um, he's only 14, and he has dark gray, almost black eyes, slender, dark skinned. Um, spoiler alert, he does later join the Night's Watch, so it's very interesting to note that some of his physical features already resemble some of the characters that we've seen in the prologue of the Night's Watch. He's even dark of skin um, and dark of eyes. His eyes are described as being almost black. Um, he is described as being graceful and quick, um, and most importantly in this chapter, he shows selflessness. Um, when they are going to kill the dire wolves, he saves the wolves and sort of helps out his younger brother and, family, and siblings um, by offering to, or he denounces his name, if you will, not necessarily denounces, but he confesses that I am no Stark father, uh, saying that, you know, he is accepting that he is a bastard, and that allows the 
wolves to live and then he also afterwards finds that there is an albino wolf um, which sort of fits being a bastard um, the albino seems to be the runt of the litter sort of shooed away from the mother wolf who has died um, so we also see that he is different his wolf has white fur he's an albino wolf um, unlike the gray of the other dire wolves all the other dire wolves are described as gray although the show makes him look different All right, so next we have Eddard Stark. Eddard is the Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. He appears with long brown hair, closely trimmed beard, and brown and white streaks, so he's kind of old, but his age is only 35. Um, he has a ceremonial greatsword uh, used, that he uses for the beheading named Ice. And Ice is described as being, uh, it was as wide across as a man's hand and taller even than Rob. The blade was Valyrian steel, spell forge and dark as smoke. Nothing held an edge like Valyrian steel. This is important to note because in the prologue we see that the others, the characters known as the others, also have a special sword. So swords obviously are something that are important. Now, Eddard, and I find this very funny, is a very fatherly character. If you really think about his relationship to Bran, Bran being the reborn character, he's almost like a Mufasa to Bran's Simba. Um, we have this interaction between Eddard and Bran. Can a, uh, Bran asks, can a man still be brave if he's afraid? And he's this little seven-year-old uh, looking for answers in life. And then uh, Eddard comes back with, that is the only time a man can be brave and it's very reminiscent of the scene when Simba is talking to Mufasa underneath the night sky and uh, just before Mufasa dies so that's an interesting comparison knowing uh, that Eddard does die later in the book um, but that's getting way ahead of ourselves um, he also says the blood of the first men still flows in the veins of the Starks and we hold to belief that the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword you know that's sort of Mufasa talking to somebody and I just really find that comparison really fascinating all right so some other characters that are that, that appear or are mentioned in the story we have Theon Greyjoy he appears as Eddard's ward he's lean dark youth of 19 years old finds everything amusing and ambivalent towards death we see that as he kicks the head of the beheaded man he laughed put his boot on the head and kicked it away on page 15. Then we have Garrett from the prologue. Um, we know it's Garrett from the prologue because of what he's excuse me because of what he's wearing he's uh, he's old wearing all black like some like a black brother from the night's watch um but we also have the line that i believe john snow says line on page 15 the others take his eyes he swore so garrett swore that he has seen the others and that's why he deserved the night's watch and was beheaded for it don't break those oaths man i'm telling you uh then we have jorah castell a uh, captain of the stark household guard we have Hullen and Harwin, the master of horse and his son, respectively. I'm sure that these few characters are going to end up being the most important characters in the story, especially Desmond. So we have some other characters who are appeared to mention. We have Mance Radar, the king beyond the wall. Um, he apparently is the king of the wildlings or a king in a land where wildlings exist. Um, and we have more information about the wildlings, that they are cruel slavers and thieves. Um, we have a few mentions of Old Nan, who appears to be some sort of storyteller or maybe a nanny or nurse or wet nurse or something of that nature. Um, we have a confirmation that Robert is important. His name is Robert Baratheon. He is apparently the king. King of the Andals and the Ronard and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm from page 14. We also learn more about the Tullys. They are red-haired, blue-eyed folks. That's not a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Uh, that'd be two different dragons. Uh, they are red-haired, blue-eyed folk of River Run. I'm sure we'll learn more about River Run as the story goes on. We also know, we learn more about Sir Roderick and that he has a red dog. Um, probably not Clifford um, because <laughs> they haven't seen a wolf or dog as big as a dire wolf, so we can guess that it's not Clifford. But Sir Roderick does have a red dog. Um, and then we have more Stark. So we know that Bran has two sisters and uh, a half-brother, an older brother, and the younger brother so very quickly we're going to talk about some themes topics and symbols um, that are some of the most important themes in such of this uh, mostly symbols this time we have blood on the snow this was an image that came up a lot in the chapter blood sprayed out across the snow as red as summer wine the snows around the stump 
drank it blood, eagerly reddening as he watched. Half buried in bloodstained snow, a huge dark shape slumped in death. So even in the prologue when I didn't talk about it as much, there's a lot of imagery of blood being hot against the cold snow, that red against that white snow. And uh, if you think about the title of the series, A Song of Glass and Fire, I'm sure it's an image that's going to come up a lot. We also get a lot about eyes in this. We have fear in the eyes, life in the eyes, and we also have uh, albino red eyes. So there are a lot of just, there's a lot of talk in, in the narrative about the eyes. And if you think about, if you think back to the prologue, there's a lot about eyes too, with the blue eyes of the others that I didn't really talk about too much as well. We get more about death and birth. Um, we have Ned, Eddard Stark. We don't know that his, he, that he goes by Ned yet until we get to the next chapter, but um, Eddard says, a ruler who hides behind pain executioners soon forgets what death is um edited on page 16 um and then we have discussions of the dire wolves circumstances around birth we see a dead dire wolf mother and with death we also see new life in the form of birth of six dire wolves so there's some imagery of death and birth um, and then we see the antler with broken tins. What does this mean? Well, um, knowing that the stag, I believe it is, is the sigil of House Baratheon. We don't get that in the book, but we will learn that later. It could be important to note that a stag has killed one of the dire wolves. Well, thank you, folks. That is all I have for you for today. That has been the Brand Viewpoint Chapter 1, the very first chapter of this series and i'm very excited to continue on with the series please like comment and subscribe i'm going to learn how to add those buttons on this video i promise this chapter was so good in terms of how it set up the characters um you know there could be multiple heroes we don't know who's a hero yet it could be brand it could be john um it could be it's probably closer to john given that heroes typically have uh, uh you know a, a mysterious parentage if you will so this has been let's read a game of thrones i've been rakim thanks for watching and listening hope to see you tomorrow